ladies and gentlemen, this is Prof there, and today we're going to be talking a bit about how really to snowball a game, because there is a huge uh, difference between doing well, going out 10-0, and actually snowballing and carrying your team. In this game, we'll uh, try to specifically focus on Anivia and how Anivia will play this game through. So please, just sit back and enjoy the game. So without further, further ado, we'll go straight into the game. Okay, so uh, this game is going to be played out really simple. We're going to be seeing uh, Diana is going to be playing against Anivia for the mid lane. Whilst for the bot lane, we're going to be see, seeing Caitlyn up against the Graves and Lulu. Caitlyn, of course, having Trash as a support. Uh, here is, uh, we see Elisa is going to be the jungler. Elisa's jungle is something that I find to be one of the more interesting jungles to play. And thus, for the red team, we're going to be seeing Darius. Darius is a sort of interesting pick. Uh, thus, it can be very scary if you combine uh, his pull with Flash. So of course, Anivia just trying to do some helping, real nice. Just time to have already timed it so that her uh, stun wouldn't just hit. So here we see. What we see a lot of people do when they play against uh, Anivia for the mid lane is that they have a tendency to really forget her egg. And a lot of tower dives has been made just because of that. As for the bot lane, Luda has been able is halfway successful to uh, to zone uh, Caitlyn for a bit of time. And now, of course, Elise was able to pick up Darius, giving uh, their jungle an early lead. So first off, when we're starting looking at a bit on Nivea here, doing a very nice burst at level three. Anivia, as we can see, has pretty high armor and magic resistance, giving her a slight edge there against the <coughs> against Diana. Having also higher AD, her pokes will do a lot more damage without having being forced to use her spells. As for the bot lane, Caitlyn was able to secure an early double kill, putting the blue team at a strong advantage for already from the get-go. So just what we're going to see now is that they're going to be trading a bit. Diana is already very low on her mana, whilst Anivia is able to really execute her pokes or trades more efficiently with one strong burst instead of small pokes along the way. Of course, Darius gets for the flash pull, thus they're not really able to utilize it for maximum damage potential. As you see now, uh, Diana is waiting for Shen to go in. They spot this, and they're, his, Anivia is actually able to snatch up the wraiths, get him back and uh, under turret for safety. Darius again goes a bit too deep and goes back into the fray. Now, diving under turret, um, Elise was able to get stunned and therefore brought down. Anivia also had had her egg up, so Shen looks like he wanted to go for the, go for that, but. It does not, thus it's an easy pick up here. Thus forcing out a flash, Shen goes down. And now Anivia is suddenly uh, in a position where she can snowball here on out. As for Diana, she now will have a much harder lane. Getting a nice stun off there and is able to execute her, uh, her combo, dealing maximum damage potential. Also have her egg, knowing that she will not die. In this situation, Anivia knows that, okay, I, I can trade. I was so close to killing her. I have no risk whatsoever, because I have my egg. As for the bot lane, it's going pretty rough. Caitlyn is able to do a lot of poking damage. Uh, Lulu here is trying to do some of the same things. Thus, with a longer range, uh, Caitlyn will be able to outpoke for the entire game. Graves ha are a champion with a very high burst with her this EQ. Thus, uh, with no real support to be able to back that up, 
um, and no real possibility to go for nice, uh, nice all-in trades, it will not really be beneficial. And uh, therefore, there, that little advantage there is gone. Elise already wants to go for a gank here, but is spotted. So, <clears throat> so the red team starts to fall back. Darius, Darius almost getting caught there. And if he had, that might have given Diana an early, uh, an extra kill here. Nivea after level 6, of course, is very strong with blue buff, being able to have a constant wave clear using her ultimate. Now we're just speeding this up a bit. So here we see, Nivea knowing, okay, I've removed my, uh, I've cleared my wave, so I'll just go for a gank. This is very nice job, secu securing Rennington and a kill on Shen, putting him also at an advantage, using her wall, to clear uh, vision. So here back to the mid lane, just going for another clear before uh, roaming bot lane. Might also want to ward, but sees that there isn't a kill opportunity with an overextended bot lane. Of course Darius sees this and tries to go follow up, but a bit being a bit slow, and Nivea is now able to pick up or secure at least both the kills. And here Diana also wants to join the frame, but Nivea sees this and decides to go back into the mid lane does want to get the blue buff back. Once Anibia gets her blue buff again, she is straight off their kilt by a well-timed Elise and Diana gank, securing Elise with the blue. Now the bottom lane feel pressured, but they decide to continue their game. As for the top lane right now, it's a pretty much little dance here. Thus, Renekton is further ahead. As you can see here, Renekton is 101 against Chance 02, also doubling his farm. As for Bot and Killen is now 312, being as well having an advantage in minions. Now Diana getting the blue, having both the blues on their team, they have a strong advantage. Now Renekton is being picked to return, as they know that Elise will be coming top. This is something that not every player is actually doing. Clearing your... Uh, clearing an, when you're when playing Anivia for example, just clearing a wave, then roaming is a strong opportunity to get kills, both for yourself and for your laning uh, partners. So here we see. Renekton and Anivia is able to catch Elise in, in their own jungle and almost being able to kill Shen as well. Does very nice play by get, using his taunt to escape. Now Renekton is just getting a stronger advantage and now is able to force uh, Shen pretty much out of lane and might even have the bottom kill potential. Does it does not go for a complete kill, still forcing him out of lane, giving him a, even a uh, further advantage. Anivia continuing to use her ult and the blue buff to clear, uh, to clear the babes, then being able to go uh, for something like the dragon. The bot lane is now being uh, pushed very uh, hard, and they decide to go for a little gank here. Getting hooking Thresh and being able to pin him down, Anivia getting uh, a very nice combo here, off here. And might even be able to take Caitlyn down, but they decided to back it off. Do not, do not want to go with Tyra. Lulu, Lulu goes for bait here, and is able to bait both of them in. Only Shen dives really deep, forcing him to die. Then Darius again is sort of caught out of position, thus uh, being trapped inside, or standing at least inside uh, Anivia's ult for a very long time, at least lost a lot of HP. Anivia is able to back off in safety, knowing that she had the egg. Just pretty much what we see here out from the game is that Anivia has been basically just using her egg as a security, whilst having the blue buff to clear the waves, then moving on um, until ganking, and using her roaming possibilities, uh, giving her to both herself and her team strong advantages all over the field. So now just backing it up and buying items. Okay, let's see. So if we now look at Anivia's build, 
uh, going for the uh, spell vamp to be able to really just regain that HP just by using her ultimate on minions, for example. Also in team fights, uh, having a court of tear being an important item on a champion like Anivia just to stack up extra mana. Uh, or the Rod of Ages got uh, got the Rod of Ages at rather early point in time, giving her a real lot of HP, uh, mana, and AP. Now being actually caught here, uh, Lulu is able to turn this into a good uh, team fight by using her ultimate on her, being able to secure the kill on Elise and actually uh, letting Anivia escape with her egg. A uh, very nice uh, flash there by Lulu was able to dodge. That's uh, Trash's hook. As for top lane, uh, Renekton was able to clear the uh, tower with, uh, without any bad trades. So in the total, got a tower and a lease uh, for no nothing. Now, uh, thus, uh, Diana was able to steal the, the red's blue. Of course, having the, the blue is pretty much one of the more essential things for an Anivia. Just because uh, with it she can have constant wave player, constant damage output. Thus, without it, she will start to have mana problems after a while and have to conserve. And now being able to trap Elise here and, quite ca and just catching her out of position, being very well, very well done. Almost, almost being able to escape there uh, due to Shen ultimate. Thus, Shen is able to escape or being actually caught in his own jungle before he uses his taunt to get away. And here we are now getting called by Diana, knowing that she can still out-trade her and have her egg. This egg will really be a lifesaver during the entire game, knowing that if she dies, she can be safe. Thus, dying out of position is pretty much the most essential part of killing Anivia. Just catch, if you catch her out of position, you can both kill her and her egg. Going for a nice flash here, dunking, and securing the kill for her team, and Lulu is actually picking that one up. And being able to escape using both shields and team play. Here, they want to go for nice pressure. And now Anivia is backing. With Anivia backing, there, this might be a really bad fight here. As you can see, they're going pretty much 4 out on 4. Does the red team a lot of higher burst, and Darius just got caught and played I one out pretty poorly. You see now, a very nice little poke there, but withered, withered spider lane there from um, Lise. Now they're just clearing up the wave, and Anivia is once again back. How will Anivia start to really execute this play here? Blood does getting caught in the middle of everything. Her ultimate really does a lot of damage though. And they're actually able to clear that one up without further ado. Anivia uh, having her ultimate up that, 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 that entire fight pretty much was essential and crucial for their victory. Having multiple ticks on, every, on pretty much every uh, team member of the blue team. Uh, just having the ticks there uh, was really a game changer. She was really able to execute it and doing a lot of damage to, and of course, the entire team. When the entire team was damaged that much, it was an easy job for Renekton to jump in using his stun and just trying to work on cleaning it up. Of course, Ludo's slow here is a strong advantage for the, uh, because if Ludo hits with her slow, uh, they will have a much easier task. Uh, keeping them within, also having the wall, keeping them within Anivia's ultimate, which is going to be ultimately <laughs> uh, their major uh, damage output source. So as we're looking at Anivia right now, she have gotten a bit of the magic resist, also giving her a lot of mana region, because she knows that, okay, I've lost my blue a lot of times, so also having this extra mana region is important. As well as facing um, Di both Diana and Elise, the magic resist is such a, an important, important part of the game, of the and of her build. And if you are having a very slow move speed, uh, getting also gotten boots for some of the extra gold that she have.
So something that is real important when you're working on snowballing is that you also need to adapt a tiny bit after what your opponent is actually building or what they're doing. As you can see here, it looks like the blue team actually wants to get off an engagement, at least misses with her stun. So does uh, Anivia, and they're just as far. Does Renekin can get off his stun? No engagement has been made all yet. Almost being able to catch the blue team out of position many times, they decide not to go for anything big. Maybe I just be able to do some nice poking times there on Shen. As you can see right now, there's just a little uh, poke there. And now, being able to actually catch the blue team within their jungle is really potent here. Uh, Darius goes for a dunk, does not really get the kill though, but they're able to clean it up pretty nicely, having Graves from the side here, and then just standing inside Nevia's old for all that entire time. Okay, so uh, Diana thinks that she might get away, just trying to live still a bit back here. Nevia being able to get off, her, get off her stun and get off her abilities, and then is able to secure the kill for Graves. <laughs> okay, so something that was really important about this team fight here was the fact that the blue team actually engaged up through the little choke. Uh, on Nevia, all she had to do was put her ultimate in this area, get off a stun, as well as Lulu being able to CC and Darius being able to pull. Uh, slash and uh, execute, giving them a very strong edge in the team fight. And here on out is pretty much working on an entire team, just working on a snowball. Thus, uh, the blue team have a pretty strong team comp with champions like Khalees. And here Darius goes a bit too baller and man mode, uh, and a very deep. Thus, he's able to get back to safety, and Nivea. Oh, thing almost very risky there, but the team fight has been pretty, pretty much cleared up. Shen really went in for a bit too deep dive there. Uh, now Trash is probably going to get caught. Yes, using the uh, double flash there. Uh, overall, that team fight was pretty easily won. They were just signing them one by one, and we were, uh, was able to see see everyone that was really diving in for both Anivia and Graves. And that is something that is really important in the matches. Uh, being able, the support's job is not only CCing and working on uh, helping his team, but also um, focus on saving the carries. So, for example, uh, right in this situation, we have Anivia uh, being the hyper carry for their team. Oh, uh, now Darius is being caught out of position, stopped his uh, recall, and goes down. Looks like they really want to go for the chase here. Diana being able to dodge Ludi. Actually, managed to need to dodge the trash hook as well. And of course, Renekton will most likely fall, yes. Thus, Lulu and Graves is able to get away safely. As I was just mentioning, uh, it's very important for the support to be supporting or really just trying to keep the carries alive with more than it is to just CC their, their team. So, in this situation, oh, Graves actually falls down trying to hold on to the turret. 1v5 or 1v4 in this situation it was a pretty bad uh, choice there. Anivia is, uh, is actually capable of this because now with the, that huge amount of damage and wave player she is able to pick up a kill and clear the wave without any problems at all. So now back to checking out her items she got Leand Leandra's Torment. Leandra's Torment is a really strong item on uh, Anivia right now because after the uh, bug fix, it actually does tick every uh, time with her ultimate. So that means that her ultimate not only doing a lot of damage, but also ticks uh, with percentage damage. And is able to secure the dragon. Very nice. And now Anivia can just basically roam around, just trying to pick up kills wherever she is able to get them. Um, Thus, Lulu has been doing a very nice job in this uh, fight, just really working on trying to save Anivia when in every single engagement, having altered her, shielded her, and slowed and exhausted those who've been working on trying to kill her. Right now, it's just picking up kills left and right to secure victory for their team. Uh, Lulu, what I like about Lulu is that Lulu is sort of a reverse uh, mouth fight ulti. Uh, just plainly put like that, and can really stop any sort of engage on their, uh, on the hyper carries, or in this case, on the yeah. So now it looks like they just want to get the inhibitor. Uh, and a very nice job here by Renekton trying to really uh, keep the blue team from really being able to do anything. 
Now Diana's diving in deep and is being able to pick up Lulu. Now very nice here, just standing in the ultimate for way too long. Picking up double kill, getting a triple kill. And now it looks like Caitlyn and Trash is moving up a bit too close. And being able to get stunned, and if it flashes in, using her ultimate, getting a quarter kill, and now gets off. Oh, actually hits with his stun, using his e, her E, and getting a, actually finished and killed with a uh, with a basic attack, and it's a pentakill. Very well played here by Anivia, being able to pick up everyone, and of course the Renekton being able to go in for the, those extra stuns, um, really being able to secure the kills there. Uh, very nice. They were able to keep the, everyone within Anivia's ultimate, and that is what pretty much decided that. Uh, just because the, the entire enemy team, the blue team, was just standing within Anivia's ultimate for the entire team fight, and that was really the game changer there. Anivia actually still had her egg up, so this is really no problem at all, and is able to secure, uh, safely get away without really any problems here. Shen really dives in for it, but it just. just Using yourself as a bait, giving the Renekton the kill. So now, being, actually being able to pop her egg, they actually are able to pick her off. So, well played there by the blue team, were they able to catch her there. Um, but, uh, this, the game is pretty much uh, over right now, and that is pretty much how Anivia decided to snowball this game by using her ultimate as a bait player and, work in, and the team working together as keeping. Uh, the enemy team within Anivia's ultimate, giving her maximum damage output, both from her stuns, E, and ultimate. Uh, of course, her build is, uh, we're gonna be just mentioning it quickly now, uh, just gonna be go over, over, over that. So, as already mentioned, uh, the Lyandra's Torment uh, takes with her ultimate. Uh, Rod of Ages being a really important item for Anivia, giving a lot of mana, a lot of HP, and that extra AP. So getting that pretty halfway early on, as we saw Anivia getting. Uh, gives her a good opportunity to be able to snowball there now. Uh, having uh, Dodge Angel upgrade, Syrup Embrace, uh, being a lot of, uh, giving a lot of mana and giving uh, her a lot of extra AP from the mana, of course, uh, being a very important item for Anivia. And now, getting Void Staff, we know that every champion above 80 magic resist, here you see 111, very little on. Um, does uh, every every champion that has above 80 in a magic resist void staff is more efficient than the actual uh, death cap? Getting the boots for extra um, penetration, having actually 30 um, magic penetration, get, doing true damage. Notice true damage to uh, Caitlyn, for example, and of course adding the void staff, being able to do even further. Uh, then getting uh, Ch uh, Chalice Har of Harmony, of course being a very strong item here, uh, playing using it as a sort of counter against, uh, for example, Diana and Elise's uh, percentage damage. And here Lulu is being able to CC them very nicely, uh, getting out the stun from Anivia, and now they're pretty much not, yeah, no, they're not being able to get uh, Diana there. This is pretty well played here by uh, by the red team here. Uh, working a lot better as a team, uh, being able to secure the win by um, on multiple areas here. Anivia is falling though. Lulu decides to just go man mode, just focusing on the turret for getting the nexus, and finishes the game. GG well played to both teams. Okay, so uh, of course the chalice there, uh, getting the chal chalice pre pretty early on, I think it was a good choice. Uh, because the chalice was able to give her a nice, even easier possibility to snowball uh, even further into the game. Because uh, Diana and Elise were doing so much less damage, meaning that her laning phase was even easier. Uh, some of the points that gave her the possibility to roam, uh, the people f pretty much forgot about her egg. So they were diving in after her, that is one. Um, getting off her stun and ultimate were beneath them while they were diving, of course securing the kills, giving her an easy double, early double kill. At level 6 she was able to get the blue buff, um, as most mid do, and then just using her ultimate as a wave clear, then ganking. That is so essential. It's not something you see that everyone is doing, but it, we know that it is important. Because just clearing the wave, Diana is forced to stay there, to be able to not lose a lot of minions, 
and that just gave uh, Anivia the possibility to just roam on top, secure a kill for Anakin, or getting it herself, going back, clearing the wave, going bot lane. And that's pretty much how the game was just developing. It was just like, clear, gank, clear, gank. Uh, and that just gave her a very nice um, start at her snowballing. And there or not, it was pretty much, yeah, snowball, just getting the right items up, um, and of course utilizing uh, the team CC to keep them within her ultimate, uh, as well as just having a very nice burst uh, damage. So I hope you liked this little um, video here where I was just analyzing how Anivia snowballed that game, getting a pentakill, uh, grass to that, um, and just uh, pretty much carrying the game. As well as, I would like, uh, as, uh, if you want to rewatch this, I want you to notice how Lulu plays this, uh, just how uh, she defends uh, Anivia, because that, that is something that was really important, how she pretty much tried to use all her CC uh, and, all, and her ultimate on Anivia, trying to keep Anivia alive at all times, because, that, because they knew that, okay, Anivia is going to carry this game, so if Anivia stays alive, we're going to win this. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you do, please leave a comment or something. I don't understand if you didn't watch everything. So, too long didn't watch. Andy Vera carried the game. Stumbled pretty well. Good job. See you guys next time.